Kelly Heatherman, AT&T Cybersecurity and Edge. I've met a few of you guys over, over the years. I've been in the market. I've been with AT&T about 25 years. I've done everything in AT&T. I've done, you name it, I've done, I've done marketing, I've done finance, I've done mobility, I've done wireline, I've done everything, all right? I've done retail, and I've done security, and I've done SD-WAN. And over the last few years, since 2015, I've been selling not only wireline, but security and SD-WAN. Your customers, what is their biggest fear? Go. Some type of attack. What kind of attack? Cyber attack, and what, what's, the, what's the cyber attack that really stands out when your customers are? What's that? Ransomware. Ransomware, what does a ransomware attack do? It cripples you. How do ransomware, how do ransomware attacks begin? What's the vector? Email. Email, what else? Websites. Websites, bad website links. What else? Malware. Malware. Come from websites and from other, other uh, sources. What's the other source that you have to disable on your laptop? Thumb drives. What's that? Yeah, okay, I didn't hear that, but. All right, all right. Uh, the, top, the top malware that you, can, that you can deal with ransomware. A ransomware attack is like any other attack. It takes over your network, takes over your data, and ruins your day, especially if you're an IT guy. And if you're not prepared for it, please. What about public Wi-Fi? Same. Absolutely. If you're not, if you're not VPN from a public Wi-Fi, you're putting yourself in jeopardy. All right? So you see that VPN on your icon up on your laptop. All right. What are the, what are the top five or six things you can do to defend against ransomware attacks? You guys all know. Don't put unknown thumb drives here. There you go, that's one. What was that? Well, the top five or six things you can do to protect yourself against ransomware attacks. VPN. VPN. VPN is good. Don't open attachments from unknown senders. But, okay. How about scrub attachments? Scrub attachments in some sort of sandbox. Thumb drives. Thumb drives deal with the, the hardware. What's this hardware called? It's called an endpoint, right? right. So that's endpoint security. So that's endpoint security. Attachment, web filtering, uh, scanning, what else? Awareness, security awareness, exactly. Two more. Firewalls, premise-based firewalls, cloud-based firewalls. And then lastly, being able to create visibility across your whole infrastructure with a managed SIM. Everybody agree with all that? Anybody know what a SIM is? Secure, security information event manager, right? Now listen, the only way a company can protect themselves is to create visibility. As a Marine, you're, as an infantryman, your first job, move, shoot, and communicate. But you can't do those things unless you have visibility of the enemy. Get in a position where you can see and observe the enemy. And then you can do those three things. Same thing with email, with cybersecurity. You need to create visibility across, across your infrastructure to be able to take action and be proactive in defending your, your, your business from attack. Anybody got all those? Let me go through them again. Yeah. All right, email security, firewall security, prem and cloud, scanning, and I, I, I have it on the presentation too. Uh, manage SIM. Security awareness, and I missed one. What did I miss? Endpoint security. Endpoint security, that, that's, that's close. Yeah, firewall protection, okay. Well, I, I probably missed one or got it in there somewhere. Okay, AT&T sells all of those. Those are the top six things that customers need in their infrastructure. Now, for customer, for business to protect themselves, Anybody know what force protection is? Everybody know what for, you know what force protection is? Does it have to do with having insurance that they force to have that? <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's, <laughs> they could. Well, that's another, actually, insurance is another conversation. Force protection is, is making yourself stronger than the next guy. Okay. Right? Because the bad guy is going to pass you up and go to the next guy. 
the way to make yourself stronger than the next guy is to have endpoint security, to have uh, uh, next generation features and web on your, your firewall, to conduct scanning quarterly, yearly, monthly, to do training with your customers, right? And have a managed SIM, which creates visibility all over your infrastructure. That's what at and is offering. And I highlighted, what I highlighted here are the things that I'm selling on a daily basis. I closed $600,000 in contracts just in February. This year is going to be crazy with cybersecurity. It's going to be crazy. Who wants a raise? You want to raise? You want to raise? Every time you talk to a customer, bring up those six things. Okay? Penetration testing, endpoint security, email security, uh, cloud security, cloud URL sandboxing, security awareness, penetration testing, and managed SIM. Bring those six things up. I probably threw seven in there. Those six things up, and they will, they will, uh, their ears will appear and they have a conversation. They will have a conversation with you. Uh, what are customers doing today with those six things? Have you asked them? Well, no, that's actually, some of them aren't. But guess what? Most of them are. And guess who they're not doing it with? They're not doing it with us. That's the issue. Customers are doing those six things in some form or fashion, but they're not doing it with us. And you know why? And I've cured that, by the way, here in market with the direct sellers. I want to cure it with our partners, too. The reason why they're not doing this, because they don't know that AT&T sells cybersecurity. Brad. What are you doing? How do you overcome that? You, what are you doing? How do you find out yeah. you can replace what they have? I guess it's a question. We can replace everything they have. We can replace everything they have. The 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 AT and T cybersecurity portfolio is so strong, and that's the thing I tell the direct sellers. You walk into a company, right? And your your first line is network, and for some of you, mobility, right? You go to the network side. We're with, a, with, a, we're with Winstream. We have a five-year contract. Oh, that's off the table, right? Okay, well, we pivot to mobility. Well, we're with Verizon. We just signed a new two-year agreement. That's off the table. What are you going to sell them? You have nothing else to sell them except for this. Those are three pillars of the best products in the world. And why are those the best products in the world? You go right here. Because these three guys are saying these are the best products in the world. These are all part of AT&T's managed security uh, service solution and MSP, uh, MSSP uh, alert. Because AT&T is the best. They have 250 companies globally. Uh, PC Magazine says, SC Magazine says we're the best, and so does, uh, uh, so does IDC uh, MarketScape. Go ahead, please. Two questions. One is, is the service any better if you're supplying the services, the internet and all? And second is, what is the good number of employees fit price-wise for at and All right, so uh, this, this solution, these solutions right here were designed for uh, small and mid-markets. Let me go back here. Okay. I would say starting at 50 to 100 is probably your minimum. We can sell to less than that, but you're starting at a tier of 50. If a customer wants uh, managed endpoint security, and we partner with 701, they'll start at 50. If they want uh, secure web gateway, they'll start at 100. But they can still buy it. They can still buy it, and, just, and it, it's, it's very affordable. Yeah, please. When you say 50, you mean endpoint? 50 seats. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, we, go please. Is this solution 100% cloud, or is any of it required? It just depends. There's, there are, how many lines we have here? We have probably 75 lines, 50 lines. They're all, they're all a solution. They're all, they can be cloud, they can be on-premise, they can be consulting, right? And we're going to talk about that. Let me, let me pivot to this, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this slide. What you see here is how AT&T cybersecurity looks at cyber, right? The first, the first pillar here is assessing and planning. I, what that means is, what are you currently doing today? 
What did you as a customer envision doing in the near future and how can we help you get there? We have a team of 750 consultants. We have myself, we have scanners. We have accredited compliance consultants that can help a customer uh, assess where they are today and put a plan together to get them to the, the next level. The center pillar is protect and prevent. Those are much, uh, much of what you see here are point solutions. They can be on-prem and they can be cloud or a combination of both. We partner with Sentinel One on the Manage Endpoint Security. Manage Endpoint Security is a cloud-based solution, but there's a light agent on their, on their machines. So it's a mixture of being on-prem, on-cloud, and on those endpoints. Does that make sense, everybody? Any questions? Yeah. What is the process we identify a potential client, we contact at and and then we just set the initial harvest call, or what do you guys do? Well, I'll see. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a call Thursday. Right, I had a call Thursday at 10.30 in the morning. I needed a contract for, what was it? Uh, it was for, uh, I believe it was for scanning. I had, by 1.30, I had the, uh, I had the customer a contract in eSign by 1.30 in the afternoon. So at 10.30, I got the call. By 1.30, I got the contract. And guess what I did over lunch? Did I work on the contract? No, I went to the workout over lunch and still got on the contract by 1.30. Right? My point is, is that, Depending on the situation, depending on, the, on what the customer's needs are, if they need their entire network re-architected, we can do that. If they need their cybersecurity posture assessed, we can, we can do that. If they need a, a penetration test scan and a contract, I can get one turned on in the morning. All right? And some of the, and if you look at the ones that are highlighted, all those are contracts that I can build in, in the half of a day. You know, and, and even less if I, if I if we really know the customer's going to sign, and we, we're really eager to get it, and we need to get it under the wire at the end of the month. Yeah, please. When you're approaching clients through the agents, are you finding that most of the people that you're speaking to, it's the first time they spoke to a company on a product like yours, or they're already been shocked with the solution? My last year, beginning of last year in, in, 20, in 2020, um, well, in 2020, coming out of COVID, uh, customers were, I didn't know at and did cybersecurity. All right. And let's, so, all right, let me question for you. Has anyone, does anyone know, I mean, up until now, does anyone know that we do cybersecurity? Okay. No. Everybody, but most of you did, you did not know? Okay. All right. Let me ask a question. How long has at and been securing networks? 140 years. AT&T's been securing networks since that first phone call between Alexander Graham Bell and Watson. People have been trying to eavesdrop that conversation. Please. Uh, okay. I know you guys have the MVP program. Uh, can you talk about that? Um, the what program? The MVP. The MVP, program. yes. Yeah. Okay. That is part of scanning. That's okay. part of that. Those, those six things I talked about, penetration, uh, penetration testing and scanning, this is part of it. All right. All right. So... And I'll, I'll, let me finish this, and we'll get to MVP. Okay. Okay, the last pillar there, what I consider the flagship solution for AT&T, is our managed threat detection response solution. That is our SIM. AT&T has been managing the SIM for, since the internet was a commercial product, since the mid-90s. And we've been doing it mostly for government customers and global customers. Now we have a solution that we can, it's, it's robust enough and easy enough to use and integrates with everything in the world, best in class solutions that we can deploy to small and medium sized businesses. That's why that, so that is our managed threat detection response. And everything to the left of it feeds into the managed threat detection response. And it comes with an instant response plan. And it comes with a team of security analysts that are looking faces to the glass to protect your business on a 24 hour basis. Okay, all right, so let's go down the list. Okay, email security. Email security, we use through NI Proofpoint. Proofpoint is best in class email security, right? I can qualify that and I can work with Keith and your channel manager to, to qualify any opportunity in email security. Every company needs email security. That is the biggest threat to a, cust uh, to a customer. It, the things that you need to know is that it does sandboxing, it does cloud sandboxing, and it does, it, it does web uh, URL filtering. And, uh, and can do encryption if you wanted to, wanted to do encryption. All right, uh, uh, firewalls. We do on-premise firewalls and cloud firewalls. 
They're all next generation firewalls. Why do customers want cloud firewalls? What's the biggest problem with on-prem firewalls? Does anyone know? If you turn on next generation features, it eats up 80% of the bandwidth on your network. So whatever you're paying for that 100 meg circuit, you're going really to get a 20 meg circuit for a 100 meg price. That's why you want to push that, those next generation features to the cloud, right? Scanning. AT&T has an unlimited scanning program. It's called, it's called Managed Vulnerability Program. We leverage a number of platforms, but it is a scanning team of credential AT&T employees that scan your network and will continuously scan your network as on schedule or on demand, however you want it. And, it's, and, it, and the pricing is phenomenal. And, uh, and it's based on how many assets and how many IP, active IPs you have, because that's three. Security awareness, we partner with DDI on a, a program called Cyber IQ. We also have another one that we use internally um, that that's, uh, does security awareness. I mean, for 100 customers, $1,200 a month. Well, not $1,200 a year, and it, uh, that, that customer can get uh, a 18 module uh, security awareness program. All right, SIM. We talked about SIM. Starts off at 250, 250 gigs. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, what I miss? Endpoint security. We partner with Sentinel One with Endpoint Security, and we manage it out of our A Global SOCs. Why is sent, why is Endpoint Security critical? And what is Endpoint Security? Can someone name another Endpoint Security solution that they're familiar with? You guys all know them, you just don't realize it. McAfee, Symantec, Norton, all those are Endpoint Security solutions, but those are 20th century Endpoint Security solutions. at t partners with Sentinel One, which is a 21st century solution. Did I answer your question on um, managed, mobility, uh, managed uh, vulnerability program, MVP? Did I miss any of the six? Okay, real quick. How much time do I have? About five minutes. Okay. All right. Anybody know what SASE is? Yeah. Secure Access Service Edge, right? That's a, that's, that's, that term has been thrown around for the last couple of years. Basically, it's SD-WAN combined with cybersecurity. That's what SASE is. What is SD-WAN? Yes, okay. So it, it's, it's, it, is, it is really a 21st century MPLS. And it's the cheaper version of MPLS. Yeah, okay, go ahead, please, please. What? Yeah, go ahead. You don't get certain factors that MPLS is more robust connection with the VPN, it's a proper connection. ST-WAN, it's still depending on public internet, but it still does a job, it gets it done, but it's not the same. Yeah, so they're not the same. They're not the same. M MPLS costs twice as much as SD WAN does. What? A a MPLS costs twice as much as uh, the SD WAN does. Yeah, but if you have a need for it. Yeah, okay. Sell MPLS. Yeah, sell MPLS. That's fine. If you can sell MPLS, it's great. Uh, what doesn't MPLS do? What doesn't MPLS do? It doesn't give you capability to have a diverse network. Doesn't give you active, active, active failovers. Doesn't give you active, passive failovers. It doesn't give you with the solution. Doesn't give you application segmentation. Doesn't give you broadband allocation. It doesn't give you. There's, I mean, there's a whole list of things that SD WAN, well, MPLS is not going to give you that SD WAN does. AT and T partners with Cisco, uh, VMware, VeloCloud, uh, Silver Peak, which is now HPE, and. Uh, uh, and Viptela, which is Cisco also, Meraki, and Fortinet on SD-WAN solutions. Why would a customer, customers are going SD-WAN. So you, you're selling old networks. Customers want to talk about SD-WAN. Why? They're cookie cutter. They're easy to deploy. They are, they are, uh, they're built in active, uh, active, active solution in their 21st century solution. Right, and all of them come with a single portal where you have visibility of your entire network. Does that make sense? And if you're dealing with if you're dealing with Meraki or Fortinet, it's not it's just not an SD WAN box in your network. It can be expanded into APs, into switches, into uh, LTE extenders. So it's a whole suite of products that you can manage from a single instance. All right, how am I doing, Carl? Okay. Okay. 
All right. Okay, why AT&T? This, this is our consulting team. We, from our consulting team, anybody know what a virtual CISO is? Anybody knows what a CISO is? How much, is, how much do CISOs uh, usually uh, make salary rise per year? Good ones. <laughs> Good ones. 300, yeah, minimum, the yeah, entry level is probably two to, 250 to 300. And if you're a medium sized company, you're probably 350 to, to 450. Those are, those, they're expensive. AT&T has CISOs on payroll. They're AT&T badged CISOs and their sole job is to be a virtual CISO for a company. And we have a variety of programs that, that uh, the entry level programs that small businesses can take advantage of these CISOs. And what do CISOs do? I like to call it product oriented CISOs. If you need a policy or a procedure written in a week, the CISO will come in and write your policy or your procedure for you. If you have a compliance requirement that needs somebody with expertise to come in and knock out for you, a virtual CISO can do that. So the product oriented and product delivered solutions uh, for the cybersecurity world. And a variety of other things here. One thing that's really catching traction is our, is our cyber risk posture assessments. For $6,500, a customer can get a cybersecurity expert to evaluate their technology, their processes, and their procedures and give them a gap analysis of what they're doing today, where, where the gaps are, give them recommendations on mitigation and remediation, and put together a plan for the future to get them to cyber maturity. And then last thing I'll cover here is instant response plans. We can build the instant response plan and we can execute the instant response plan. Okay, we talked about that, I talked about that. All right, these are all marketing. at and is recognized the industry leader in SD-WAN. Uh, at and recognized as the market leader in SD-WAN in North America. And, uh, and in cybersecurity, at and is the, the, we beat out IBM, SolarWinds, the Herbojet Group, um, the uh, Accenture, and all other managed security service providers in cybersecurity according to CIOs around the globe. Any questions for me? Remember, take care of the little people. All right, there you go.